So here's five reasons not to start a business, and then we'll, we'll react to after this. Let's take a look. You're more concerned about the money. You're more concerned about the fame. Mm. You don't want to put in the time. Mm. You care more about yourself than your employees, and the customers aren't number one. It surprises sure. me how people continue to make the same mistakes. How people still make the same mistakes. Is it because he didn't review it? Or because people sometimes just don't want to listen? Um, can you go over those five things again? Uh, Jordan, can you go back to the screen just so we can have it up on the screen here? Those five things you just talked about, if you can just re uh, uh, put it back. But uh, I don't, one of the things that, People shouldn't start a business because they lack discipline. Yeah. You know, one of the hardest bosses to ever work for is yourself. Is yourself. If you said, I set the alarm clock at 7 o'clock, and this morning you hit the snooze button, guess what you just told yourself? You're a bad boss to yourself. Because you said the night before, I'm waking up at whatever o'clock. But you hit the snooze button. What are you saying? I don't want to listen to myself. So every time I think about that, every time I think about hitting the snooze button, I'm tempted to do it. Like, you know what? I'm a, I want to be a best boss to myself. I need discipline in my life. What, what do you, what's your thoughts about discipline? Because I know you deal with it with clients in the gym. Some of the best people that want to say, hey, I've got some great aspirations. I want to be in shape, blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, they kind of ghost you, don't they? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, it's understanding why you're involved in whatever you're involved in in the first place. Having the bigger reason behind it and having that strong anchor that's holding you down to whatever endeavor that you're pursuing. That's, one, that's why one of the, the biggest things uh, that I do when I first try to, when I first onboard a client is ask them, you know, the, you know, why are you doing this? What's anchoring you down? And what's going to anchor you down when shit gets tough and you don't want to do this anymore? Yeah. Because right now I have a fairly strong feeling, which most people do. I have a really strong feeling that you're, you're making an emotional decision because you got, you got tired of something or something happened in your life in these, la these last couple of days, weeks, or months that is putting you in a position that you want to make the decision to start working with me or just start working for yourself. But what's going to happen when things go great and everything's fine again and you're no longer emotional? That's the biggest thing that we try to instill within my, at least my client base within the first couple of weeks of them us working together. So that way they can take ownership. And one of the biggest things I tell them is I will run the race with you. I yep. will run the race by you, but I will not run the race uh, for you. Yep. Proverbs 12, 1, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but who, he who hates reproof is stupid. By the way, this, I've got 50 Bible verses here about discipline. Uh, uh, what, 1 Peter 4, 7, to end of all, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. There's so many scriptures here about discipline in the Bible. You know, discipline is one of those things, bro. Where we are, like, for example, we want freedom in our lives. We want freedom in our lives. I want financial freedom. I want physical freedom. I want uh, travel freedom. I want freedom for my kid. Da, 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 da. But guess what? At the end of the day, guess what? You have to also give up a lot of those freedoms so you can be disciplined. And that's the time and the effort that a lot of people don't want to do. You know, when they say, you know, businesses fail, 85%, 90% business fail in the first, you know, year, two, three, four years. Okay, I get it. It's because business is bad. You and I are both entrepreneurs. We didn't fail in the first couple, two, three years. Yeah. So why do people say business is bad? Because they're lacking discipline. Uh, Jordan, did you see that? Uh, can you put it up on the screen? So let's take a look at this. So they're more concerned about money. If money, if making money is your end all be all for being in business, and that's the long term for you, I get it for the short term, right? Yeah. That's why I started my business on the side because it was it was uh, it was about the money. Yeah. But if it's for the long term, all you want to do is for the long term is money. Guess what you're gonna start doing? You're gonna start cutting corners. You're just going to start uh, purging values and principles that started your business to begin with, and therefore, since you don't have any sustainable foundation, you're going you're gonna to cheat a lot of people with that mindset. It's just about the money. It's just about the money. Have you ever seen people like that? Yeah. I, for, for me, if we were to uh, reorder this list on hey, – we can put it back up, Jordan. If, if we were to order this list in the level of importance to least important, I think number five will come in number one. Customers aren't number one. And in reality, customers should be number one. That should be your number one thing because you're a problem solver. In any, in any field That's that right. you do, whether it's product or service based, you are a problem solver. So your customers should always be number one. If your customers are satisfied, your business will grow. And I think number two, uh, number two should be number three. Don't, you don't want to put in enough time. I think putting in a lot of time into your customers, into servicing them, into giving them the products that they, that they need, it should I be. I think number two is the last thing you should be concerned about fame. Fame. Because if you are good enough, guess what is it naturally going to happen anyway? That comes, that comes on its own. You're going to get recognized. People are going to want to expose you for the good things. Where do you think uh, number four should come in? Uh, uh, you care more about yourself. I think that's pretty much at the top. The reason why you're going business for yourself because you're solving problems, but at the same time too as well, as you're helping other people, guess what? You're also helping yourself. Yeah. So if you want to help people, guess what? You got to help first. Yourself. You got to help yourself first. I, mean, I tell my guys in the business all the time, if you want to serve people and, and I want to create a youth center, I want to help people, I want to help the poor, the needy, great. First of all, 
you can't be broke. No. Because when you what do you do when you get uh, when you go to church? I uh, give five bucks, ten bucks at church, or you rather give five thousand, ten thousand, or fifty grand, or hundred grand, or five million, or ten million. You know that's that's the level of the problems that you're solving is the depth of your uh, of your of your efforts in business can also lead to the efforts of your giving and your contribution to society. But uh, th- these are great things of why you should not be an entrepreneur. If these five things are ultimately important for you, and they're the, the long-lasting reasons why you're in business for yourself, my recommendation is you better work for somebody else. It's a whole lot easier to go about life doing so. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.